Coming up, we'll see Joe Burrow taking on Aaron Rodgers. The Packers and Bengals squaring off for just the 14th time, with Cincinnati winning three of the last four. It's all headed your way next on EA Sports. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League takes us to the Queen City of Cincinnati and Paul Brown Stadium right on the banks of the Ohio River. This crowd loves their orange and black. The scene just a short time ago, they were in full roar as their guys burst out of the locker room. We're ready for football as the Bengals get set to do battle with Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. as he gets set to lead this Green Bay Packer offense. Rodgers now in his 17th season in the league and, of course, coming off the MVP trophy. And he's been playing at an elite level here in this early half of the season. Tops in the league in touchdown passes at this point. This is definitely a wide-open offense, and we'll see if he can keep his string of good games going right here. Now the man from UTEP, this is Aaron Jones. The numbers for Jones last week, 19 carries, 76 yards. Well, he's the number two runner in the league, and you just know the offensive line wants to get him to number one because most of the good ball carriers, they take care of their linemen. Could be a gold watch in their future if he becomes the leading rusher. A good gain on first, has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. Rodgers with a give, it's Aaron Jones. This carry not as productive. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play, so it was looking good, but nothing there. Now it's third down at inches. An early test for this defense. Here we go on third and inches. Rodgers now to throw, and this is caught. Mercedes Lewis with a grab, and he is going to have a Packers first down, and he'll have it by plenty as they're able to keep the drive alive on 30 inches. Defensively here, you're facing a top five team in terms of points scored in the NFL, so when they're that high power, you've got to find a way to hold them under 20, because to me, that's the magic number. 20 point score gives yourself your, you give yourself your best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. I think so because then you turn it into a shootout, and that means your offense has to keep pace. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 45 yard line. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. Rodgers to throw once more. He gets this to Devontae Adams. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. And he'll be stopped after a gain of only a couple down to the 15-yard line. 
The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. A give to Jones. They stopped after only a yard, taking it down to the 14. But keep in mind, if you're thinking of staying on the ground, this is a top five rush defense. Yeah, but I don't think you shy away totally with the run. At least show them the hint of a run before you decide to throw the football. That's complete right around the eight. And the Packers are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And oftentimes we think about statement drives in the second halves of games, especially in the fourth quarter. But here, it's happening. Touchdown, Packers! Mercedes Lewis, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Packers take it right down the field and score on the opening drive. Crosby with the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive, and it ends with a Packers touchdown. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Williams to return. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. Time to see the Bengals' offense go to work. And leading them out, the number one overall pick in the 2020 draft, Joe Burrow, now his second season out of LSU. Now, the meeting we had with him this week, that's one of the briefer ones we've ever had, isn't it? <laughs> he wasn't too happy after last week. Not happy. Really determined to play a whole lot better. And he really can't play a whole lot worse. He's got to go out and show the team that the goods that he exhibited early are still there. Otherwise, he could lose the confidence that they have in him. And hoping to get rid of that interception bug. And he'll be brought down here at the 28. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. What I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. They'll only get a couple up to about the 30. Well, this defense for the Packers, they were excellent a week ago in the win over Pittsburgh. And what keyed their victory? The pass rush. Got to the quarterback six times for sacks and plenty of other turbulence in the pocket for him as well. Hard to throw the ball downfield when all you're seeing is opposing jerseys come at you. Each team has its own terminology. Some people call it jumbo, some call it monster, some call it king. But it doesn't really matter. They brought in the big lumber to pick up that first down. Yeah, you think about goal line defense with the goal line offense that time getting it done. And now they will throw it with Burrow. There's the rookie from LSU. It's Jamar Chase. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Ready for the second quarter from Cincinnati. It's the Bengals with the football here as they've got it with a first and 10. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. And his throw is incomplete. I will see more of them trying to get him the football out of the backfield. They love what he can do in open space, and they believe that he creates mismatches they can exploit. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Burrow will throw. And the catch made, it's Tyler Boyd. Puts it on the carpet, it's out, and the Packers pick it up. And his guys are gonna get the football at the 28-yard line. We have seen this before. And we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. Marching back onto the field now, Devontae Adams and company getting set to go. 
And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. Escaping the pressure right. That's caught by the tight end, Drew Sample. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. From the 22, Burrow going for it all. And that'll be caught. Touchdown, Bengals. It's Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Bengals are an extra point away from tying up this football game. A nice throw there by the second-year quarterback. And I don't believe that was the kind of play he would have made as a rookie because usually your rookie season is a continuation of your college days. A lot of one read, and if you don't have it, you just take off and go. Now he's settled in the pocket a little bit more, reading the field and getting to a second and sometimes third progression. That was a nice play. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And we are tied here in the second quarter. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be brought down at the 28-yard line, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone gets him three more. The Packers offense here coming back out for their second drive. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline, because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. On first and 10, here's Rodgers. This one swung out here to Jones. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why. What we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play, one-on-one -on -one matchup with someone trying to cover them. It got his man complete! Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. And time to give some credit to the big fellas, the offensive line here, because you've got to have good protection on crossing routes because you've got to give your receiver time to work all the way across the field. That time, be able to scan the field, spot his receiver moving left to right, and make a good, accurate throw. Thank you, guys. Now left side, a completion to his tight end, and he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. Three yards the game there, second down. On play action, it's Rodgers. And down he goes. They sack him back right around the 41 yard line. Trey Hendrickson, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. But just not much a quarterback can do there, CD. The pressure was in his face almost instantaneously, led to a very quick sack. And it appears that this was just a letdown from the offensive line, but they do have a tough job because if you're a big tackle out there on the perimeter, sometimes you don't have the agility to keep up with the defensive end who's looking to wreak havoc in the backfield, and he got there and put his man on the ground. Right side, it's Lewis. And this play going to be stopped in its tracks at the 32, and obviously well short of the first down. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. So now on fourth down, Rodgers will give way to Mason Crosby for the field goal try. This is a 49-yard attempt, right hash. 
And Crosby puts it through. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. So a good kick there, and they put the bow tie on it with three points. And let's face it, everybody wants a touchdown. We know that. But in the NFL, defenses are awfully good. You're not going to score each and every time. Be able to knock the ball through the post and take the three. By the way, I said bow tie. I meant just bow. Not Either the, way. Not the tie, but yeah. Either way. You got it. I just went right past it. And ultimately Let's cannot go. get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. you that coming up at halftime we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL now the pressure comes and he goes down just inside the 10 back at the nine Devondre Campbell flies in to blow that play up boy that's tough Charles first play of the drive you're hoping to stay ahead of schedule you take that huge sack and now you're facing second and a mile and the entire time you were probably thinking the same thing I was. Either get rid of the ball safely, of course, or go down. The yardage he gave up on that play, that's going to be tough for them to make up. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. The Packers going to use one of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. Burrow looking to pass. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. So on fourth down, on comes the left-footed punter, Kevin Huber, to punt it away. yards on the punt, give him just one yard on the return and it'll be Packer football here first down and 10 and Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field and they split the uprights last time for three they've got the lead they're not going to play this conservative they're, they're not hoping for another field goal they're hoping for a touchdown I'm with you on that one I like where your head is I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right trying to sit on a lead and play that way that doesn't work too well for most teams Run your Don't offense. Run what you do best. On the gas. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. Throwing on first down is Rodgers. That is caught at the seven. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. As long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. Here's Rodgers. And he's got it. It's caught for a Packers touchdown. Mercedes Lewis as the first half is winding down. And the Packers would extend their lead here just before halftime. Extra point up and good by Crosby. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. This taken in at the goal line. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. The Bengals drive about to get going as they go to work with 12 seconds on the clock. Burrow going to fake to mix it and now look to throw. And this throw will be intercepted. Picked off at the 24. Now, CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic about it. he shouldn't have thrown that ball. But remember, second year, as you noted, on the job training. So he's got to take this feedback that he's getting, negative or otherwise, and turn it into positives moving forward. 
So not the greatest of first halves for him, but a little ray of light here at the end. The late turnover becomes three points before the break. Well, they certainly needed something positive to go their way. Maybe three points didn't seem like a huge deal in the grand scheme of things, but at least it's something to build on as they head into the half. Final play of the half for Burrow and company. Airing one out for Boyd. That's caught inside the 20. And he's in for the touchdown on the final play of the first half. The prayer is answered. How did they get that done? And with the clock at all zeros, they get the touchdown to make this just a one-score game into the lockers. And you know what else it does? Besides boost their confidence, it doesn't change your game plan any. See, if they're down bigger going into the half, you may have to revise what you plan to do in the second. But now in this spot, within one score and striking distance, uh -uh, you go ahead and keep playing and do what you've worked out all week long. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And the lead will shrink to six. So we've come to halftime here with the visiting Packers out on top. As we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thank you very much. More from you two in just a bit. But first, let's get everybody caught up with what's going on around the NFL here in week five. We start with two of the winningest franchises in the AFC. Denver heading east to take on Pittsburgh. And they are nearing halftime with the Steelers out in front. The rookie from Alabama, Najee Harris, with a touchdown run. From there, we move to H-Town to check on the Texans at home at NRG Stadium. And they currently trail in that game against the visiting Patriots. Mac Jones with a couple of touchdown passes. Lastly, let's head up to the Twin Cities to check in on the Vikings at home in Minneapolis. And they trail the visiting Lions in that one. Two touchdown passes there for Jared Goff. And on now to a check on the next-gen stats in that first half for the Packers. And their passing game has been the reason why they lead thus far. They've had great success moving the ball through two quarters of play. Meanwhile, for the Bengals, they weren't quite as successful throwing the ball as their counterparts were, but they still were able to move the ball reasonably well in that first half. These two teams making their final adjustments for the second half. And to bring it your way, we go back up to Cincinnati and Brandon God. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. So it's the Packers set to receive the kick. They've got the lead as well as we are underway in the third quarter. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. Time for Tyler Boyd and the rest of the offense to take over now. And they've got to figure out how to stop some of the highlights that we're seeing on the screen here. And what it feels like, he's going to say it doesn't matter what you put out here. I am having a big-time performance. I'm playing at a big-time level. Just keep throwing me the football. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. And they do trail, but they have a chance to possess the football first to try and do something about it. And that certainly makes it something of an important drive for them because is it going to win the game? No, but you have to do something to bring some life to your sideline. A big play that time through the air. 30 yards. That's evidence of why you spend a high draft pick on a receiver, isn't it, Charles? It certainly is. His ability to make plays like that, and we've seen flashes of it from him so far in his rookie season. But also, it opens things up for the rest of the offense because they have to bring their attention to him as well. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. And they go play action now. Burrow. He sets to fire deep. And that is incomplete. I think that was good strategy there, trying to go right back to him after the last completion. But this time, the defense was all over him, and they got there to break that one up. 11, 11, 11. Check, check, check. Play action. It's Burrow. He's got his man, that sample to tight end. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. And 
Burrow going to throw again. This one hauled in by Sample. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. A gain of six there on first. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. To throw again on second down. Burrow. He gets this one to Boyd. Oh, he's hit. He lost the football. Put it on the carpet. And the Packers pick it up. A lot of talk this week about ball security. In fact, they added an extra period in practice to be more secure with the ball. It didn't work out there. Well, sometimes you just get overexcited during the game. You may all of a sudden make your catch, see some open field, and decide you're going for it and not realizing that danger lurks while you're doing so. And there's your end result right there. And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. Now, the question, was the knee, in fact, down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. So that challenge, a successful one. Off the play fake, here's Burrow. Flush to his right. And he can't get rid of it, he's taken down. And it's never good to take a sack. You really don't want to take one down here in this part of the field down near the red zone. Not at all, because you're already pretty much assured of a field goal. But you take a big sack, it could push you out of range, and that's why defenses get a little more aggressive in this situation. They're almost conceding the three points. They want to push you back and try and take you out of that. Balluting the pressure right. That's to Chase. He's got it. Touchdown, Cincinnati. Jamar Chase, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Bengals draw even, and of course they can take the lead if they hit the extra point. He was able to move around and found some vision to throw the football. And how about how he ended it? Boy, he had some zip on that throw. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to have an arm like that. Results in the touchdown here. Great play offensively. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And that will put them on top here in the third. So after the made field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. So here are the Packers now. They get set for their first possession of half number two. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got... got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. A pass there over the middle to start things out. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. And another nice catch there for a first down by Devontae Adams. That's something we're quite familiar with. Last year, the NFL leader in touchdown catches with 18, tied for second in receptions, fifth in receiving yards, added all up, arguably the top receiver in the NFL. And that is incomplete. Well, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. A third quarter now and a one-point game as they line up second and 10. Out of the shotgun, it's Jones. And he's going to have just a couple here with a marker on the field as well. That's David Bakhtiari, the all-pro tackle. Guilty on that one. Now after the holding call, here's second and 20. 
Rodgers now to throw. And he'll be taken down by the Bengal pressure. Let's Trey Hendrickson make that now eight sacks for him on the season. He's the NFL sack leader coming into the game, and now that's two more that he's added to his total. He wants some separation from spot one and two in that sack category. Rodgers now, after the sack, he'll lead the pack up on third and long. Now it's Rodgers. Going up top. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. Touchdown, Packers. Marquez Valdez-Scantling, his second touchdown on the season. And once again, the Packers, they're back out in front. Even later into his career now, there aren't too many guys that can launch it downfield with accuracy better than Aaron Rodgers. And that is absolutely demoralizing for a defense because you've got the offense on the ropes. It's third down. You're trying to get off the field and then wham. You have a letdown in the secondary and you give up a big one. So now Rodgers will lead the Packers up to go for two. Rodgers will throw for it. And this will be caught as they convert here for two. So they go with a pass there on the two-point try and able to convert it, Charles. And a good job by the offense figuring out their two-point play and using it well. It's interesting how people are using the strategy nowadays, though, isn't it? It really is, and I don't know how much that one, that particular play factored in, but with the PAT moving back in 15-16, that kind of changed things, didn't it? It's really a part of everyone's strategy now. When I talk with coaches and when we sit with them, they always talk about they actually have two-point periods in practice now, something they never really did before. The Bengals drive about to get going. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Burrow on play action. Flushed out right. And he wisely will throw that one away. Oh, I like that right there. Not only was it the right play, throwing it away like that, frankly, I think it was the only play. Yeah, got outside of the pocket, realized he had nothing, just chucked it free. Yeah, lived to fight another down, right? And he'll be touched out here, but not before he does pick up the first. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. And that's caught one more time by Boyd. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Well, here's a throw off the scramble, and that's complete out left. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A big connection on that one. 35 yards. We have seen big plays from both quarterbacks throughout this game, and there's another one right there. Going back and forth, almost like two excellent guitar soloists trying to top each other with each additional play. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And a short gain here down to the 22. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. And he's got it. Touchdown, Bengals. C.J. Uzama, his second touchdown on the season. And the Bengals are an extra point away from tying this game here in the fourth. 
And we are set up for a fantastic finish now. A fourth quarter touchdown here. We're an extra point away from a tie football game. And I know they're thinking about possibly going for two, but I'd go ahead and kick this one and just get it back to level. And McPherson on for the extra point. And an important one that is as we are tied now early in this fourth quarter. So that lines up a seven-play drive all told. And it's finished off with a Cincinnati touchdown. So right back to square one, tied at 28 as he kicks it away. And this will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. The Green Bay offense ready to take over. Well, they just gave up the score to tie it. That's the bad news. The good news, plenty of time in this fourth quarter to try to grab that lead back. Rodgers will break the huddle and bring the pack up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Throwing to start the drive. Rodgers over the middle complete. It's Cobb. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. On first down, Rodgers. He's got a man complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A big play that time through the air. 33 yards. Now a first down carry by Jones. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. They'll go again to Jones. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Most of damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've run the bell three times with passing touchdowns. But guess what? Ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. Able to push his way through. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. They're going to run the jet sweep. It's Cobb with it. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the nine. Call that a loss of a yard, and things get a little more difficult here, third and five. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. From the gun on third down, Rodgers. Yeah, he's got it. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Getting down to the good stuff. All tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. So it's Packer football here as we welcome you back. They've got it first and goal looking to take the lead here in the late going. Off the option, it's Jones. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, Packers. Aaron Jones with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Packers answer back with a touchdown of their own to break our tie and take the lead here in the fourth. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. It's up and good, and they've jumped back ahead, 35-28. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And the last play in the drive was a touchdown run by Aaron Jones. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Williams now on the return. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. So Burrow and the Bengals down by seven. A minute 55 remaining. 
How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. To throw, Burrow. Finding sample. And he makes it all the way down to the 31. A big play there for Cincinnati. Charles, just a gigantic play right there. Absolute breakdown defensively, but take no credit away. A huge gain, and that turns things around. Oh, no, he lost the football. And the Packers pick it up. And they will take over possession of the football at their 42-yard line. So good field position for the Packers as they come up first and 10 at their own 42. They'll try and run some clock now with Jones. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Larry Ogunjobi there to make the tackle. Second down, another shot for Jones. And some room to maneuver. 20. Touchdown, Packers. Aaron Jones, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Packers add on to their lead, and they are also closing in on a fifth straight victory. Crosby connects on the extra point, and the lead now up to 14. So two plays on that scoring drive. That's how they drew it up. And a long run into the end zone, and what a run it was. And that'll be a little too hot to handle as it will skip through the end zone for a touchback here. And now all the focus, it shifts to the Bengals. Trailing in this one now. A little over a minute to go. Field goals, useless at this point. They need two touchdowns, and they need them in short order. Throwing, Burrow. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. It got his man complete. And he takes this one into the end zone. And all of a sudden, here in the final minute, things get a little bit tighter. If there was one knock on Joe Burrow coming out of LSU, you know, it was arm strength, but kind of put those doubts to rest right there. And I'm telling you, nothing will let up a crowd more than a play like that. Here in the stadium, all eyes were on the receivers streaking downfield, and you know everyone was thinking, throw it, he's open. What a connection there for the touchdown. And that one, and even 60 yards in the air, wow. McPherson on for the point after. And that'll cut the lead down now to a touchdown. One of the shortest drives you'll ever see. One play, 75 yards, six points. So there is still time, a little over 50 seconds to go, but this becomes a critical onside kick. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a capper on this one. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Another running situation on the doorstep as they come up second and 10. Again, it's Jones. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. The Packers looking to get out of here with a win as they take the knee. On now is the Packers punter, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. 
The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. And last time, the formula was pretty simple. One play drive, long pass. That Maybe they just want to do that again, right? And that's exactly how you want to draw. Oh, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Darnell Savage. And into the end zone. It's a pick six and a Packer touchdown. Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So for the Packers, they improved to 5-0 now on the young season. And they'll get another road test next week as they head to the Windy City to take on the Bears. Meanwhile, for the Bengals, the loss will move them back to 3-2 on the year.